So, quite a while ago, I was living with someone who was driving a Mercedes S550. And the Mercedes had some interior lighting that was nice looking, but if you did not like the colors it came with as presets, then that was tough luck because you cannot make your own. It had three color choices, and that was it. So what we're doing today is trying to create a device that will allow us to manipulate the color of an RGB LED strip that runs off of a 12 volt power source. Which means that in theory we can plug it into car accessory power and outdo the Mercedes engineers. So to do that I've chosen a microcontroller. This here is the Arduino Uno. It is uh, quite a famous microcontroller. You can program this in C and C++, and once you're done prototyping, you can remove this chip right here, uh, which is the brains of the operation, and uh, make your project a whole lot smaller. So to tell this Arduino what we want it to display in terms of colors on this RGB strip, apologies for poor camera work, um, I have an HC06 Bluetooth transceiver, uh, which we will be able to connect to using a smartphone such as this. Um, it cannot be an iPhone, however, because an iPhone is not able to communicate on the Bluetooth SPP protocol, which this uses. Uh, to run all of this on a 12 volt power source, uh, the voltage that we supply the Arduino with has to be stepped down from 12 to 9 volts as far as I'm aware, so we have a voltage regulator to do that job. And you can see that all the bits and pieces that make this up are not very large. Uh, this is a euro coin, two euro coin, this is 20 kroners, and this is a penny. So the size of all of this should be quite apparent. It's not huge. Um, so to show you how I will be prototyping this, I will be using Fritzing, which is a computer program that will give you an overview of the breadboard that I will create. And uh, from that, you will be able to get a better overview than looking at a live breadboard. Okay, so what we have here is an overview of the prototype that we'll be building. And I'll try and go over in as much detail as necessary how this is going to work. So I'll begin with the RGB LED strip that we're using. Uh, the way this strip works is it is a so-called common anode strip, which means that every LED on the strip shares the positive pin, and then depending on how much power is being synced through the red, green, and blue wires, a certain color will show. So for example, if no current is being synced through the red and green wires, while the blue wire has a dead short, we will see a fully lit blue LED and no red and green light. However, the Arduino that we're using to control this is not able to be syncing the amount of current that will be flowing through the RGB LED strip. And so what we're having to use is a set of transistors, one for each colors. And the transistors act pretty much as a switch. So based on the signal sent to the transistor from the Arduino, it will let X amount of current flow from the cathodes to ground. Um, the signal from the Arduino is an analog signal uh, using pulse width modulation, and so it can be anywhere from off to on, uh, so anywhere in between. So it will be f switching the transistors really quickly. Uh, in other words, uh, the 12 volt power source comes in here and runs through a voltage regulator to power the Arduino, and then the Arduino comes with its own voltage regulator on board which allows it to power the HC06 on its 5 volt rail. Uh, the HC06 and Arduino are connected on the TX and RX pins of each respective device, but between the RX pin of the HC06 and the Arduino is a simple voltage divider used to ensure 3.3 volt logic levels, because that is required by the HC06. Okay, hopefully that clears everything up, and I'll go ahead and build the prototype now, and show you if it works or not. Okay, so what we have here is the finished prototype. It is running off of a 12 volt LiPo battery, and the reason why I wanted to show you the breadboard 
overview on a computer is probably apparent right now. It is a hot mess of jumper cables. However, it does work. It is currently displaying the default bright white. And if I connect to the HC06 on my phone, I have set up a number of color presets that I can change it to. Um, you will notice that the number of color presets is already higher than the Mercedes, and voila, you can see it changes to whichever color we want. Um, the Arduino can also obviously take custom colors and display those, but who remembers the RGB color palette in their head? I certainly don't. Uh, so if you do not give a single shit about the code running on this Arduino or anything running behind the scenes, I thank you for watching. Um, but you can leave the video now because what I'll do now is go over the library used uh, and how the code is set up. So if you're interested, come along. If you're not, then thanks for watching. Okay, so what we have here is the entirety of the code running on the Arduino. It is not a lot, so we should be able to run through it pretty quickly. Uh, first of all, I include the Fast LED library, which is a library with functionality around almost everything about LEDs, especially digitally addressable ones. Uh, however, we are not using a digitally addressable LED strip, so the only functionality we're using here is for fast LED library to blend one of our colors towards another. So when we change the color from say white to blue, it'll fade really pretty. Uh, the reason for that is fast LED can use the HSV color space uh, instead of stepping linearly through RGB, which usually ends up looking pretty stupid uh, because you'll usually go through brown and stuff. Uh, then we define a character Bluetooth val, which is a byte-sized value that we will be reading from the Bluetooth device. We define our red, green, and blue pin outputs uh, as pin 3, 6, and 9, which are obviously values that you can change to your preference. Uh, do, however, be aware that they have to be PWM-enabled pins. We then define our fade speed, which is a number of milliseconds that the loop will be delayed by uh, through each iteration. We then create two CRGB palette 16s, which are color palettes, uh, one current palette and a target palette, uh, the current palette being the color that we will be displaying all the time while uh, it will always be stepping towards the target palette. So when we change the colors, or we send a command on the Bluetooth device to change the color, the target palette changes, and then current palette steps towards it. Then we have a number of max changes that are max changes per iteration of the loop, or rather per this function from the fast LED library, which is blend palette toward palette, which we just send the current current palette, the target palette, and the number of max changes in as parameters, and it does all the magic for us. And our void setup is pretty much nothing special. We have a three second power up safety delay. We begin reading the serial connectors, the RX and TX pins on our Arduino, and we designate our red, green, and blue pins as outputs. We then have a show analog RGB function that basically does the output for us. Uh, we send it a CRGB entity from the fast LED library and it will output it for us. Now the way I have it connected, um, 0 is full intensity and 255 is uh, no <laughs> intensity, so we have to subtract the RGB values from 255. In the void loop, it is pretty much straightforward. We read the byte value from the Bluetooth device, and depending on which value that is, we change the target palette to a preset color. Of course, if you want to, you can read a string from the Bluetooth device and uh, maybe interpret it as an RGB code and display a custom code. However, uh, this is for prototyping purposes, so. I did not elect to do, to do that. 
Uh, then we blend these palettes towards each other, as previously mentioned. And then we grab a CRGB current color from the color palette, current palette, obviously. Uh, because the color palettes contain several colors, but we are not interested in displaying all of them. We're just taking the first one of each uh, because it seems satisfactory enough, honestly, at full brightness. We then display the colors and delay the iterations of this, this loop by our 10 milliseconds. So that is honestly it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, thanks for watching. Um, be sure to stick around for future videos if you so wish. Uh, you could subscribe or set up an RSS feed or preferably just keep clicking F5. It will work eventually.